I first met the patient uh, in my clinic and she was very emotional and very upset because she had acute vision changes in her right eye. And when I asked her what happened, it turns out that she was undergoing elective right cataract uh, surgery in her eye. And when she woke up, she couldn't see anything. And both her and the ophthalmologist who performed the procedure were completely baffled because the procedure went actually very well. Um, the ophthalmologist referred her to see Dr. Henderson here at the Wilmer Eye Institute at Johns Hopkins. And Dr. Henderson performed a comprehensive workup for her, which included a brain MRI. And the brain MRI showed that she had a very large medial sphenoid wing meningioma. And that tumor was so large, it significantly was compressing the optic nerve on the right side, which is most likely why she had the symptoms of vision problems. Over the course of the next couple of days, her vision did return somewhat, although it was not back to normal. And by the time she saw me, she was very nervous that she was gonna go blind um, in the right eye. I talked with her at length about what a sphenoid wing meningioma is. And you know these tumors are very slow growing tumors. And most likely she had had the tumor for at least 10, maybe 20 years. Unfortunately for her, the tumor was so large and it was putting so much pressure on the optic nerve of her right side that any little manipulation, including most likely the surgical, manip uh, the surgical manipulations of the cataract surgery, um, you know, caused her to lose her vision in that eye temporarily. I spoke with her about the options for treating this tumor. And in general, when treating tumors like meningiomas, there are three options. You could do nothing, in other words, uh, conservative management. And that's very reasonable for patients who are in their 80s and 90s who otherwise would not be good surgical candidates. Um, radiation is also an option, but in this case, because the tumor was so large, and also because the tumor was exerting so much pressure on the optic nerve, I didn't feel like that was a good option for her because when you radiate a tumor of that size, the tumor can actually swell, and if the swelling causes more pressure on the optic nerve, that can actually make her vision worse. So for all of those reasons, um, I recommended microsurgical uh, resection of the tumor for her. And she's a patient who is in her mid-70s, but she's otherwise very healthy. She's able to go golfing. She's very active. She's outside um, doing her activities of daily living every day, which is the reason why I thought that surgery would be a reasonable option for her. It is a big operation. The surgery uh, takes essentially the whole day. And essentially the surgery involves you know, a, a skin incision and removing the bone. Um, and we drill extensively the bone that surrounds um, the optic nerve. And that's a very delicate portion of surgery um, because we're essentially removing very, very hard bone um, around a very, very soft and delicate nerve structure. But that procedure allows the nerve, the space, if you will, um, to move additionally and be less compressed from the tumor. After that, we open up the membrane that surrounds the brain and we carefully lay out all of the arteries um, that are uh, running along the tumor and sometimes can be encased in the tumor. So to do that, we do a uh, um, splitting of the sylvian fissure and we completely lay out the distal MCA branches and we trace those proximally to both the ICA termination, the A1 and the M1. And after we completely identify and protect those vessels, then we resect everything along the skull base and re we remove the tumor. After we took out about 90% of the tumor, there was still a little bit of tumor left that was adherent against the optic nerve itself. And you could see that every single time we pulled that tumor, the whole optic nerve would pull along with it as well. And at that point, I made the decision to leave just a little rind of tumor along the optic nerve because remember, the tumor is very slow growing and there's no point to the surgery if we resect 100% of the surgery, but the patient wakes up blind. And so we left that little bit uh, a rind of tumor, less than 5%. And when the patient woke up, her vision was actually improved, which is you know, very, very um, reassuring. Um, sometimes patients, you know, just due to surgical manipulation of the optic nerve, actually work, uh, wake up temporarily with wor worsened vision. So for her, that was a real success. Over the course of the next six months to a year under Dr. Henderson's care, um, her vision returned to essentially baseline and she's, she was able to go back to all her activities of daily living. And I just spoke with her on the phone today and she is actually meeting with her ophthalmologist to uh, schedule her cataract surgery for her left eye.